Hello everyone. I would like to welcome you all on behalf of IIT Delhi Alumni Association. My name is Gaurav Goel, class of 2009 Aravli Hostel, IIT Delhi. I am currently convener of Arugyam Healthcare Initiative of IIT Delhi Alumni Association. IIT Delhi is an institute of eminence as declared by Government of India. IIT Delhi Alumni Association represents 57,000 IIT Delhi alumni globally who have contributed significantly to various social and economic development for the nation. Arugyam, a healthcare and wellness initiative was started last year by IIT Delhi Alumni Association. Sometimes in corporate world, in our busy schedule, we give less importance to health and overall wellness and which has long-term ill effects. To bring unique knowledge about healthcare and wellness to our alumni, we are organizing various such events in Arugyam Initiative. So far, three events have been organized in Arugyam series and we have received wonderful feedback from our alumni across the globe. In future also, we aspire to invite various healthcare and spiritual leaders from across the world to Arugyam platform. And now, I would like to invite our today's speaker, Acharya Prashanti. Acharya Prashant is an acclaimed authority on Vedanta and author of over 80 books, including the bestseller Karma and Ananda and a powerful voice of social spiritual awakening in the today's world. After graduating from IIT Delhi, Acharya Prashant went on to qualify both UPSC and CAT in the same year. After two years at I am Ahmedabad and a few years at corporate, he found himself a higher calling of spreading the ancient wisdom of Vedanta among the masses. And for the same purpose, he founded his mission, which is at the forefront of creating of a new humanity through intelligence spirituality. Today, this movement has touched the life of tens of millions of individuals through his direct contact with people and through various books and internet based channels he continues to bring clarity to all so i'll not take much of the time and i would invite acharya prashant ji among all of us good afternoon thank you for having me here and for the kind introduction and I'm really looking forward to this interaction. Thank you so much. I would like to invite Mr. Pankaj for the first question to Acharya ji. Uh, Namaskar Acharya ji. Uh, I'm Pankaj Kapadia, uh, B.Tech 2011 batch. I wanted to ask you a question. Do you believe capitalism is at the core of many problems we face today? If yes, what can individuals do about it? For example, at society level, income inequality has kept on increasing. At economic level, greed drives many business decisions as well as government decisions at times. At individual level, it puts us into a constant race for many more uh, things to achieve in terms of monetary gains. And this is how we take education, housing, travel, healthcare, and they have been very expensive nowadays. So I want your opinion on this, that uh, do you believe that this is the core uh, issue to address and how to go about it? Acharya sir. Uh, thank you for the question, Pankaj. It's not as if uh, human beings are uh, all right within themselves and uh, pure of uh, intention, simple and innocent beings. And then somehow an alien system called capitalism invades them and uh, victimizes them. Hmm? Uh, but that's how uh, somehow a lot of us uh, would like to think because uh, this line of thought places the blame of our present condition on something alien to us. 
so we are uh, then happily um, able to um, justify being what we are and uh, claim innocence where does uh, capitalism come from if we say capitalism is to be blamed for our situation as it is where does this uh, economic and uh, social system come from it comes from the mind of man it comes from our own tendencies you know capitalism is just a way of organization of the economy what does it say it says that uh, private individuals will have the right to function economically as they please and uh, that uh, they'll have the freedom to earn profits and uh, supply and demand will determine the market prices right and government would not uh, interfere in uh, such matters now you are giving somebody the right to do economic activity as per his choice per se how can this be blamed for the mess we are in hmm? let's say you give the right of production and the right of ownership of capital and resources to some other entity like the government huh? which we think of as an alternate system right you give the ownership of resources not to private entities but to the collective entity called government will that really change things because uh, if the mind of uh, the human being is corrupted then so will be the mind of the government no hmm? i am someone who has been given the right to operate freely and produce and uh, sell as i please what will i produce how will i sell how will i entice my prospective consumer to buy that depends on uh, the direction of my mind and the center i am operating from if the center i am operating from is itself animalistic then i'll want to earn profits for myself whatever be the social cost i'll say uh, i might be selling uh, something very useless and also quite dangerous and if i have to manipulate the uh, customer's mind to get my thing sold i'll do that you let the government uh, have control of uh, goods and services and the corrupt mind is found there as well there the corrupt mind will manifest itself in some other form we know the kind of uh, corruption that prevailed in the erstwhile ussr we know what went behind the iron curtain we know why economic activity had to collapse and why the collapse of economic activity was one of the reasons behind the disintegration of that country so if we are rotten from within that rottenness will show up irrespective of the economic system philosophical system political system social system we choose for ourselves no system will have the power to redeem us because we are the fathers of all our systems systems come from us we don't come from our systems so the point the systems come from the source that has to be cleansed but that involves something very challenging that involves challenging the very ego of the human being and uh, all that we see around ourselves is nothing but the game of the ego hmm? the fundamental existential self it the game is on for the sustenance the furtherance and the protection of the ego the ego will not want the game to shape up in a way that challenges the player itself the challenges the existence of the player itself the game exists 
for the pleasure of the player the player is the ego but if you want to play the game in a way that the player runs the risk of annihilation then the player refuses to play the game but that is what we need today otherwise uh, all that we are staring at is uh, um, massive destruction of the kind we have never historically witnessed right so it it's not about uh, a debate between philosophies it's not capitalism versus socialism is it's not any ism versus any other ism it's fundamentally about uh, self knowledge do we know who we are once we realize who we are our trust on the products of our thought will reduce and then we will be a little cautious of seeking solutions in systems of thought you can come up with newer and newer systems of thought place your faith in them and hope that the new system the the seemingly innovative system will redeem you unfortunately it won't because of the simple reason that we are reiterating it is all coming from the same center it is all coming from the same place so a new system may offer a, a glimpse of redemption it may entertain us and uh, uh, make us optimistic for a while but these are uh, all false beginnings they they offer a promise that does not last the change that we need is inward and it sounds cliched i know it's been repeated so many times it's been repeated so many times but it has never been executed so let's not just uh, dismiss it as uh, another cliche we need an education system in which the child is uh, very clearly openly rather ruthlessly helped to face his her animalistic prakritik nature when we realize that our fundamental tendencies are all very gross very primitive and therefore we are not to place our deepest confidence on ourselves then we'll develop a certain humility and try to look for uh, solutions beyond what our animalistic tendencies and uh, subsequent thoughts propose to us without that uh, I, i don't really see um, a, a solution see, all that we think of as solutions are nothing but extensions of systems that are already prevalent in the jungle it's just that we have the added power of intellect as a privileged species so the same things that operate in the jungle get uh, mm, get ornamented with intellect and operate in our cities and countries that does not make them any any fundamentally different from what we see out there in in the in the jungle and if we want uh, really something that is subtle nuanced sophisticated sublime then we'll have to look at another source within us that will give rise to something else operating from the same source we cannot get a different output a different result thank you acharya ji Namaskar my name is Saurabh I am from Mumbai uh, I have been learning from Acharya ji since 8 months I think Shik- uh, Shikshit 
G had already covered most of the points just before me. Uh, but I would still like to go ahead and start or share my journey. So first I had uh, started Acharya Ji uh, sessions with Gita. Obviously everybody joins Bhagavad Gita first. And eventually I joined all four sessions. Um, I find listening to all these four sessions in parallel provides you different levels of clarity because all four sessions provide you different aspects in a way. Uh, I just try to uh, try to narrate uh, what different session gives so that everybody probably understands the uh, the outlooks from each session or a high level clarity. So Sant Sarita tries to teach you bhajans which are centered around common man's life. Uh, it gives you glimpses of how Sant Kabir used to perceive reality around us, uh, which we all see in our daily life, but uh, we don't comprehend it the way Kabir Sahib does. The Bodh Pratisha, which Acharya Ji teaches, equips you with teachings of Nagarjun, Laozu. For personally, for me, Shunyata Sakti have been very effective. Uh, I don't know because. I had this fascination probably about mukti, but Shunyata Sakti even takes you takes that away from you. There is no mukti because there is no one. So that is personally effective for me. Then the third session that I regularly listen to is Vedanta Sahita, which is a very core uh, learning from Upanishad and Ashtavakar Gita that we uh, received from Acharya Ji. Uh, they are based on direct Advait Vedanta principles. Uh, since I have joined Acharya Ji, I have read a literature on Advaita in, written by multiple people. And the final is the Mad Bhagavad Gita session with which uh, everyone starts their journey with Acharya Ji. Bhagavad Gita is just magical. Uh, it takes you to places where you can never imagine to go. I don't know, it will break you, but I think that Damage will lead you to some place else where you had never imagined to go. Bhagavad Gita is great.